We can rise to the occasion. We can build this nation moving forward. All that we need, visionary leadership, people who love their people, people who love the citizens, people who love the country, and then we can rise. We can fly again. Hope Restoration Ministries, restoring hope to our world. Welcome to our broadcast. Enjoy. We also support our Gents Night that is coming on the 3rd of June. Can we pray? Father, it is in the name of Jesus that we approach your throne of grace with such confidence. For we know, my Father, you are faithful to your word. And we know as we sit at at your feet, Lord Jesus, you are about to speak life to each and every one of us. Minister Holy Spirit, minister life, speak as though it is the last time you'll be speaking to us. If ever there was a time we needed to hear you most, it is now. Kulumangos, kulumas magate, gekama liga Jesu Christo. Amen and amen. So we continue on, you know, kingdom come. But this month, we are focusing on families, and we're looking at kingdom families. Before we can continue, if we look at, okay, I don't have that, the kingdom family slide that had, you know, Christ as the head, actually, is God is Christ, his husband, his wife, and the children. I just want to say to those of us who are not married, please don't be discouraged. You are raising children on your own as a single parent know that the Lord is with you. As long as you are submitted under him, the Lord would continue to help you to raise those children well. But let's look at what a kingdom family is. A kingdom family is a family by God's design which live according to God's standards and principles and a family that is centered around Christ and committed to fulfilling Christ's mandate of establishing his kingdom on earth. And I want us to continue on the very same theme as we connect, you know, the, the, the remnant family, as we connect with the, the women who changed the course of history, just to understand that we are here on earth for a reason and for a purpose. Because the truth is, families are under attack. Therefore, we need to be intentional as members of the family, as parents, as husbands and wives, that we are going to build families that are going to glorify the Lord. When I'm saying families are under attack, I believe a number of us, we know that over half of marriages, they end in divorce. Many parents, though the Lord has blessed them, but they are absent and they are irresponsible in raising those children. And we find children who are raising themselves. That is why we are saying family is under attack. Over 50% of the households of the families are fatherless. And the crime and the abuse that we hear of daily happens within the family. A place that is supposed to be a place of safety and love and protection. That's where a number of us are being hurt and harmed. And more than five million children are orphaned. And you wonder who is raising them. What's going to happen to them in five years' time, in ten years' time. And we see elderly grandparents raising younger children. And it shouldn't be so. Where are the mothers? Where are the fathers? And we know some of them are dead, but some of them are just absent. All that they are doing is just to collect their grant and they miss in action. And many children, because of all this cruelty of the society of the world, they are angry and wayward. And unfortunately, as much as they are angry because of what has been done to them, they actually contribute to the ills of the society as well. That is why we need men and women who are going to stand and pray and say, Father, we need you to intervene because the family unit is under attack. Actually, the enemy is not sleeping. The Bible declares he roams around like a, a roaring lion looking for the one whom he can devour. May it be that each and every day we say, 
May the families of South Africa not be devoured by the wicked ones because we are standing in the gap as the people of God. In fact, the devastating crime and abuse and all this evil that we are hearing of every day that we are faced with daily can be traced back to the family. May we realize the responsibility that we have as children of God, that God has entrusted us with those families so that we can groom them and nurture them so that they can be the kingdom family that God intended them to be. You can see that the family, or we know all of us, that the family is the core of the society. And if the family doesn't fare well, it means we as a nation are not going to fare well. That is why my prayer is that may we realize as the church that the state of our nation, the state of our leadership is a reflection of the dysfunction within the family. Help us, oh God, as husbands and wives in this place, as parents, as children, to realize that God is counting on us to change the status quo. Some of us, we're looking unto the government and God is looking unto us this morning to say something can be done. And yes, it is said that everything falls and rises on leadership. But the question that I want us to answer this morning is who raised our current leaders? Actually, who raised Putin? And how was he raised? What values, what principles was he given as he was being raised and nurtured? Why can he just kills and it's like, who cares? Children, innocent children, women and men are being killed and it's like, he doesn't care. May we realize this morning that if we want greater and stronger leaders, we, it's going to take us to raise them. It's going to take us to be intentional in nurturing and grooming them because leaders are shaped whether in a negative way or a positive way. They are shaped within families. Therefore, we need to make sure that the Lord helps us so that we can shape them and make them so that tomorrow we can enjoy the peace of the land. Psalms 128, verse 1 to verse 6. Blessed, happy, empowered to prosper is everyone who fears the Lord, who walks in his ways. Realize that when you fear the Lord, it doesn't end there. The fruit thereof are walking in his ways and keeping his principles. Verse 2, when you eat the labor of your hands, you shall be happy and it shall be well with you. Today we are not there, but we are saying we need to make sure that we are faithful and we eat the labor of our hands. Your wife shall be like a fruitful vine in the very heart of your house. Your children like olive plants all around your table. Behold, thus shall the man be blessed who fears the Lord. The Lord bless you out of Zion. And may you see the good of Jerusalem all the days of your life. Yes, may you see your children's children. Peace upon Israel. And this morning, allow me to say peace upon our nation. May the Lord help us so that we may know what we need to do just to change things around. This psalm, it paints a picture of a kingdom family, of a God-loving, God-honoring family, and the ripple effect this family has on the church, on the nation, and on the church, on the city, and ultimately on the nation. And maybe this morning what I need to quickly do is to answer this question. What makes a family a kingdom family? Some of us, we're thinking a family is a kingdom family just because there is a father or just because there is a mother. But I believe even for, to, to those of us who are raising our siblings, the Lord can help us because we have those child-headed families. The Lord can help us so that the families, the siblings that we are raising, they are kingdom siblings. They are kingdom children. They grow and they become mighty for the sake of our God and his kingdom. 
So what makes a family a kingdom family? A kingdom family is a, is a family that is devoted to God. The family that is steadfast in its faith in God. This means this family has made Christ the core, the center of its life. In whatever they do, they keep his precepts. They keep his rule. They keep his standards. They remain in God's will. May I say this? As much as the Bible says, blessed is everyone. That, that, that verse, you know, blesses me to say, you are happy, not when you are rich. You are happy, not when you are poor. You are happy, not when you are well to do, but you are happy when you fear God. It means all of us in this place can be happy, or we can choose to be happy. We can choose to be blessed by choosing Christ Jesus to be our Lord and Savior of our lives. The Bible says they are blessed who fear the Lord and they walk in his ways. Like I said, if you fear the Lord, then you are going to walk in obedience. So everyone in this family, this is the nuclear family, be it siblings within there, father, mother in the family, and the children. The Bible says all of them, they fear God. All of them, they love God. All of them, they honor God. All of them, they walk in the ways of God. Can I say this to you this morning, church? That it takes blessed individuals within the family to create a blessed family. Because a family is as blessed as its individual members. And if all of us children, you remember I told you that God wants to know you as his father. He wants you to know him as his, as his father, not as a grandfather. You cannot be blessed just because I am saved and you are not as a child. You need to take responsibility for your life and choose salvation for yourself. And the Bible says everyone would be blessed in that family. And can I say that a family is as miserable as its individual members. If you are not blessed, that means you are unhappy. That means you are miserable. That means you are cursed. And I believe all of us, if we are not saved this morning, if we are unhappy this morning, if we are not empowered to prosper by God this morning, we need to take Jesus as our Lord and Savior. Make him the Lord, the master, and the king of our lives. And the second thing, what makes a family a kingdom family? A kingdom family is developed, is raised, is nurtured, within a proper environment, within a proper atmosphere. There's an atmosphere that is proper for a kingdom family to thrive, for a fin kingdom family to be established. Some of our families are toxic. It's no wonder nothing good grows in those families. And this morning I am praying, may the Lord help us as individuals first to search our hearts to say, what negative contribution am I making in this family? And if I'm doing something wrong, oh God, help me. Help me to change so that my family can thrive. The Bible declares this husband who is married to this wife, he makes sure that he sets the atmosphere for growth, the atmosphere for, you know, success. Can I say this to those of us who are married, husbands? Make sure that you set that atmosphere. You create that atmosphere for growth and success. Because if you do that, if you do not lord over your children and lord over your wife, don't think you are there to be boss. But be a, a man who is submitted to Christ Jesus, who is submitted, who surrendered to God so that your children, your wife, they can be happy because you walk in the ways of God. And that's the environment that we need to set as fathers, as husbands in families. And to those of us who are not married, can I say this? As a guardian, as a mother, as a parent, 
You need to make sure that you set, you create that environment for your children to thrive, for your children to grow. And maybe you are asking, other than submitting yourself to the Lord to create this atmosphere for change, atmosphere for growth, atmosphere, you know, for success, what else can I do? Make sure that your family is a family that is full of love. The ointment of love continues to, to flow. The ointment of grace continues to flow. You know, someone once described family as a place that people go to when they are tired of being kind. And some of us, that's what we do. When you are out there, my goodness, she's so gracious. She's so patient. She's so understanding. Oh, this man, he is so good. He's so gracious. He opens even doors for us at work. When you get there, you even ask yourself, is this the, person, the same person? Some of us as parents, when we are at church, about to to they even wish we can just remain there. Because we are super, super nice. The beautiful that, things that we say, darling, is she referring to me, sweetheart? You know, because saints are around you. Can I say this? You know, the world that we are living in is judgmental. The world that we are living in is harsh. The world that we are living in is hateful. We've got enough of that when we go back home. May we find the atmosphere of grace. Even when we have done wrong, people are well able to say, we understand, we forgive you. You are not that thing, but that's just a mistake. Some of us, the thing that we say to our wives, husbands, to our husbands, wives, to our children, parents, oh my goodness, may God heal us. Maybe some of us, we need that healing. The reason why we are doing that to our family, immediate family member, is because we've suffered same when we are growing up. And I pray, may the healing balm of the Lord fall upon each and every one of us, even this morning, in the name of Jesus. Not only that, but the Bible says, his wife. Can I just, for a minute, allow me, I know you are here, you're not married, but please don't be, you know, uh, sensitive. I'm just talking to those who are married. The Bible says your wife is going to be like a vine that is fruitful. A vine symbolizes fruitfulness. But a vine cannot be fruitful by itself. Can I just, and ladies, please, ning, ning, I'll be sensitive, but I'm talking about the vine. The vine cannot, you know, climb and grow on its own. It needs a place to cling to. Husband, your wife needs you to grow. You know, some of us husbands, we need to be intentional. May God deliver us from cell phones, the technology, the social media. Some of us, wherever you are, you have a gadget in your hand. You are present, but you are absent. And your wife needs someone. You know, when I talk about her needing someone to cling to so that she may grow, she needs encouragement. And all of us, we do. Just like as a husband, you need encouragement. Your wife needs encouragement to say, baby, you can do this. There's more to you than this. God has given you abilities. God has given you skills. Let's go for it, my baby. Let's go for it, my honey. Let's go for it, my sugar. And you shall see her clinging and climbing. And you shall see her clustering. And when the vine has clustered, it means it's cut the wine. Because I'm not clean. Because of her love, you're going to be intoxicated by and with her love because you decided to be there just to support her. And all of us, we need that. Wives, let's make sure we encourage our husbands to say, honey, thank you. Thank you for providing for us. Let's go for it. And then as parents, let's remember, we need to raise our children as well. 
Can I just say this to men? Let us not be intim intimidated by our wives who are climbing and growing in our very eyes. The Bible says within your chambers, she's going to be fruitful. Isn't it said that some of us, we are fruitful outside our homes because our husbands are intimidated? That is why they are saying all these demeaning things. So that, but and I pray in the name of Jesus that men may you be secured in who God has created you to be. Because when she thrives, it makes you look good. Have you seen a woman who is supported? Have you seen a woman who is cherished with all her flaws? She glows wherever she is. And have you seen a woman who's being abused? You don't need to say it to say I'm abused. You can even see it. The, how, the way how she walks. The way how she carries herself around you as a man. To a point where you're saying, you are embarrassing me. Say, can you do better? So that she can just lift her head up and walk as the daughter of God that God has created her to be. And we stand even this morning against abuse, the abuse of women the abuse of children, and even the abuse of men. Because some of us, that is why when I'm talking about the healing, I'm not specifically looking at one gender or a particular gender. And can I say these children, we even have children who are abusive to their parents. That is why the Bible says, your children are going to be like olive shoots. They are going to be supportive. And olive symbolizes, you know, strength and joy. Your children are going to be a constant source of joy. But the sad reality is that our children, some of them, they are a constant source of sorrow. And I pray may the Lord heal our children. And can I challenge Abu Mama, challenge Abu Baba? You are called to lead. Lead. You cannot be scared of abandon abako. And I pray in the name of Jesus, stand. If you feel they are going to harm you, rather they go to jail. But stand for what you believe in. Stand and raise them up. Stand and train them up. Some of them, is sometimes it confuses me. But I even tell them, boy, sit down. I want to talk to you. I need bad. I don't want to be intimidated. Sit down. Let me talk to you. You don't do this. I'm your mother. No, but you are not nice. I'm not here to be nice. I'm not here to, to be your friend. Because I think as much as it looks cute, it looks beautiful, that our children, they are like our bodies. But some of us, that's how we are treating them. Like our friends. Even when we are supposed to discipline them. We are raising leaders for tomorrow. Leaders who are going to be disciplined. Leaders who would know that this is wrong, this is right. Leaders of integrity. You tell them, my babies, you don't do this. Not in my house. Not now, not ever. You know why? Because the Lord has given you just 18 years. 18 years. It takes a number of years for an olive plant to grow. But you need to make sure you are intentional. The 18 years, Ligobe, this is a man. You make sure you train them up. But you, even when they go to university, where they, they encounter a culture that is anti God, the culture that's humanistic, the culture that speaks of evolution, they should know oh, see, they are not a mistake. It didn't take, you know, a chance of molecules coming together for you to be here on earth. But you are a daughter of God. You are a son of God. Just like a Jewish father would do around the table. Just to speak life unto them. Just to prophesy unto them. This is what we need to do daily. To say, you are called of God in Tamulu. You are called of God in Tsako. Understand that it is not a mistake that you are alive. I was even telling them the other time to say you need to stand for what you believe in. When your friends, they begin to make, you know, mockery of Christ, don't laugh with them. 
look them straight in the eye and say, that is my God. That is my father. I am who I am because of him. You cannot make fun of him. And I look at you and I laugh with you. If you want to be a friend of mine, stick to your lane and leave my God alone. And I was telling God that when hope the other time, to say especially hope, you are, not only are you the life of the party, hope she's the party. Wherever she is, she's surrounded by people, they are laughing. And I told her, that's good, but it doesn't end there. You need to ask them, let's go to church. Make a commitment to Christ. Let's be trendsetters. Let's influence the culture. We are not here just to enjoy life. We have a purpose. We have a reason. I am begging you. It's not easy to raise children. Sometimes they challenge you. But tell yourself you are going to be tenacious. You're going to be persevering. You're going to stand your ground and be strong and courageous. And tell yourself I'm going to stand and raise them up. In a way of the Lord. When some servants walk, but in our last second, the Lord will be able to save us. The blame is not on me. The guilt is not on me. Some ones, that is why I'm saying, "Unga go bupondo as a mother, as a father." For as long as he's not married. No girlfriend is going to come in this house. When did you pop out in Obola for her? Must make it so it's the church of Jesus. What is going to happen if we're saying marriage is under attack? We're saying people are even despising the unit of marriage. They, you know, what, what are we calling it? Marriage. Marriage and an institution of marriage, they are undermining it because not we are undermining it. Not in my name. Not in my name. It's not going to happen. Not in this house. Shem. I even told them, wrong. wrong. Honestly, when it comes to these things, Nkatok was even saying, My goodness, I wonder the day who Adamazo Vuga. Because I even sense these things. I pray for my children. Do you know how powerful you are as a mom, as a father? God has given you the responsibility to raise them. And he's given you a sense. Some of these things, you're able to look at this and say, my child, this is a wrong friend. This is not a boyfriend. Be careful, Malega. Because you sense these things. And I told God, they go, that's what I'm going to do. I'm let her win. If you are here and it's you, as long as you know that you are okay, because she's, she's 20 ban ban. And I'm praying, but I'm going to sense you. I'm going to check. I'm going to go up here. I'm going to locate you. Where are you? I have not given birth to children so that they may populate hell. I have not given birth to children. Not with my children. I'm going to pray for them until they get to that point. Where are the prayer warriors? Where are the prayerful mothers? Where are the prayerful fathers who understand that our nation depends on how we raise them? Our church will be blessed. The Bible declares you'll be empowered from Zion. That is why this morning in this church, in this Mount Zion, we are saying, be equipped as a mother. Be equipped as a father and raise them in the fear of the Lord. We are here to charge you. We are here to tell you, you need to influence them before they leave your home. When you look back, you say, God, it was worth it. I may be lost, but this is what my mommy stood for. This is what my daddy stood for. They go there, not because they are ignorant, but because they chose to. And I pray, may the Lord help us. 
as his church. May the Lord help us as parents. It is not easy. It is challenging. It is difficult. That is why this morning I pray as I stand as your pastor for the power of God to fall on you. The power from on high to fall on you. The spirit of boldness so that even when you get home, you begin to chase the wicked spirits that are keeping your children captive. We are again understanding the authority that God has given you. And you stand and you declare in the name of Jesus. Atmosphere change in the name of Jesus. Devil let loose. Devil let go. These are my children. These are kingdom. Kingdom children. These are the ones that are going to love the Lord. That are going to advance the kingdom. May you be sick and tired this morning. Some of us, we have succumbed to say, do not succumb for the sake of our nation, for the sake of the nations of the world. It is never too late. It is never too late. I believe God can turn things around. This God is a miracle working God. And I believe even this morning, Abantuana Betu, they are getting aligned. They are getting aligned. They are getting aligned. Wherever they are, the Lord is touching those hearts. Wherever they are, the Lord is changing them. May they come to their senses, oh God. And those who are in the road narrow, in the road straight and narrow, may they remain there. We pray in the name of Jesus. We're living in a culture, in a world that wants to choke our children, that wants to destroy our children. But by this morning we declare our children are untouchable. They are unstoppable, oh God. Your hand of mercy is upon them. Your anointing, the yoke destroying anointing is upon them. The blood of Jesus speaks better things on their behalf, oh God, that which the enemy meant to harm them. You shall turn it, oh God, for their good and for the good of your kingdom. We declare, we prophesy, we receive it. For we know it is done. It is done. It is done, oh God. It is done, my Father. It is done, my Jesus. Even this morning, we pray for those marriages that are in tatters. In the name of Jesus, under the sound of my voice, I declare restoration. Restoration. We are raising kingdom marriages. We are raising kingdom children. We are raising kingdom families. Move, oh God. Move on our behalf. Convict us of our sins, oh God. In the name of Jesus. Baba, we take this time and we repent before you. The Bible declares, if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray, seek my face and turn away from their wicked, wicked ways, then you would hear from heaven, then you would forgive our sins, then you would heal our land. Baba, forgive us for having shifted, for having moved. We pray, my Father, may you reposition us to our rightful place that we may keep our post in the name of the Lord. Heal our land. We pray for this beautiful nation. We pray for Ukraine. We pray for the nations of the world. We say, my Father, let there be change. Let there be change, oh God. For the sake of the people living in those nations, in the name of the Lord. In this morning, I want those of us, those of us who are faced with challenges in their marriages, who are faced with raising those unruly children, 
I believe the Lord is in this place. Some of us, he wants to strengthen us, to remind us, to give us that fight back. You remember, it's not about the dog that is in the fight, but it's about the fight that is within the dog. And I want us this morning to say, revive that fight. We need that fight back so that we may fight until the end. As much as the enemy won't retrieve now, but we are not going to surrender. We are not going to give up. We're not going to give up on our marriages. We're not going to be give up on our children. We're not going to be give up on this beautiful nation. We are going nowhere. This is our place. I'm so happy. Don't ask the tempest. Where would I go? Things they're supposed to change. And if you are here, you say, Father, I'm going nowhere. But we are going. I'm not going to give up on them. Right now, can I ask? We come wherever you are. Maybe don't come. Just kneel wherever you are. And I want us to declare. To declare war against the kingdom of the enemy. To tell the enemy as six savvy. We are not scared of you. We are not scared of you. We are not scared of you. And so, Father, we pray. Heal, O God, heal my Father. Restore my God, restore my Father. Strengthen, O God, strengthen my God. Give us a fight back, O God. Give us a fight in the name of Jesus. We declare, we stand even this morning. We are not going to go back. We are not going to stand. We are not going to surrender until things change. For you, oh God, are faithful. You are faithful to heal. You are faithful to deliver. You are faithful to set free. You came, Lord Jesus, to set the captives free. And even right now, oh God, we speak your peace. We speak, my God, restoration upon our families, upon our land upon all those marriages that are struggling. Oh God, heal! Heal, oh God! The Bible declares you are God and nothing is too difficult for you. My Father, we believe we are living in times where we need to stand and live by faith for we are your just ones. You've made us your righteousness, oh God. In Christ Jesus. Just like the prodigal son. Wherever they are, oh God. From whence they have fallen. Of the love that they had for you. When they first came out of the land of slavery. In the name of Jesus. The name of the Lord. The name that is exalted above every other name. We thank you, O oh God, that the Bible declares, though we are in the flesh, we do not wage war according to the flesh, for the weapons of our, 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 our warfare, they are not carnal, they are not flesh, but they are mighty in God to the pulling down of strongholds, bringing everything, every argument, and every lofty thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. We pull it down, we cast it down in the name of Jesus. Jesus, and we declare in and your will alone shall be done in our lives in the name of Jesus in the name of the Lord oh God we thank you we thank you oh God thank you Lord thank you Jesus Aga Lulwa to Jesus.
I'm going to pray and release you, but you are here. The Bible declares, blessed shall you be from Zion. You are here. Not only do you need prayer, but you need someone that you can talk to. You don't need to pray. Pay someone outside just to tell them what is it that you are going through. And just to believe God for a breakthrough as they pray for you. So we're just going to allow you, as soon as I've prayed for everyone else, just to come. You receive that embrace, that, you know, hand, and, 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 and as a point of contact to say whatever you are faced with, it shall bow at the name of Jesus. And as soon as we have done that, in Dadema Dumba, I'm not sure if the, 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 the counselors are ready, but if you want to speak, just tell the elders who will be praying for you to say, can I see someone? And if you don't have time, you can just, they can take your numbers and during the week, we can just make appointments. You are here to be empowered. You are here to be encouraged. You are here to be equipped. You are here to receive restoration. And I believe we are here for you. Therefore, do not go home the same way. Can you stretch your hand towards me? This is your remnant, oh God. This is your army, O oh Father. And I believe by this army, you shall begin to do exploits. You can sense the move and the shift. Even in our administration, O oh God, because of the men and the women in this place that we have ordained for such a time, O oh God. May you open their eyes that they may see those vacant places that they need to occupy. My Father, I pray in the name of Jesus. Give them the boldness, O oh Father, to stand. Stand for you. Stand for justice. Stand for the poor. Stand for the orphans. Stand for the widows, O oh God. In the name of the Lord, I pray as they leave this place, may you remind them of the assignment, of the mandate that you have given them, O oh God. My Father, I miss the blessings that you have given them. May they understand the struggle continues for you oh God have called us to fight and stand against the principalities against the powers oh God even in dark, in dark places even as they stand this morning I declare Holy Spirit you shall continue to minister unto them and I pray your protection oh God wherever they go I declare they are covered by you. They are protected by you. In the name of Jesus, I declare the schemes of the enemy concerning their lives are frustrated. In the name of the Lord. As they leave this place, they live empowered. They live resuscitated. They live enlivened. They live encouraged. They live energized, even for the work that is before them. In the name of Jesus, we declare. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you so much, family. Thank you so much, church. As you leave this place, remember, our brothers and sisters, they are showcasing their businesses out there. But those of us who need prayer and ministration of prayer, can I allow the elders to come? Come, elders. Let's believe God for their breakthrough. God bless you. Ushers, may we usher them nicely, those of us.